Good evening, I'm Tracy Spicer. This is the Late Night News. the late night news, Nigeria begins to feel the bite of international anger over the execution of nine activists. Victorian police defend the officer involved in the latest fatal shooting. And more Indonesian fishermen arrested for allegedly operating inside Australian waters. But first, Australia has recalled her High Commissioner to Nigeria as part of the growing world condemnation of the execution of nine political prisoners. But so far, world opinion has made no difference, with Nigeria ignoring her suspension from the Commonwealth. The military government in Nigeria was today quick to repress any dissent on the streets, and dictator General Sonny Abasha was unrepentant about hanging the opponents of his regime. Demonstrations have already started in London against oil companies which provide 90% of the country's income. At the Chogham meeting in New Zealand, Nigeria was suspended until it makes democratic reforms. Australia, along with the US and Europe, is making its own diplomatic protest. In the first instance, we'll be withdrawing our ambassador to show our anger uh, and our objection to this sort of behaviour. Uh, the denial of uh, human rights and human values in Nigeria. The Nigerian delegation left the Chogham meeting early. The problem their country created, the latest test of strength for the Commonwealth leaders, who today took time out for a Remembrance Day service. Prime Minister Keating was among the leaders to lay a wreath at a small village war memorial set spectacularly in New Zealand's Southern Alps. Later, Mr Keating held a special meeting with an old adversary, Malaysia's Dr Mahathir. Relations between Australia and Malaysia have suddenly improved. The two leaders are new allies on nuclear testing and are now arranging increased airline flights between the two countries. Mr Keating is also hoping to get increased cooperation from Dr Mahathir on the problems of APEC. Paul Smith, 10 News. British Prime Minister John Major has imposed an immediate arms embargo against Nigeria, with other nations expected to take action soon. Protests against yesterday's executions in the capital, Lagos, were swiftly stopped by security forces. In the streets of Lagos, many supporters of democracy could only silently grieve the loss of their hero. One pro-democracy rally was quickly dispersed by police with tear gas. Human rights lawyers have described the executions as state murder for which General Abasha should be tried. But the general himself remains unrepentant and his regime has reacted to suspension by accusing the Commonwealth of a premeditated act unrelated to the executions. We see it as most unfortunate, unfair and baseless. And it doesn't seem to approximate events and development in Nigeria. The sanction that would really hurt Nigeria's leaders would be an embargo against their oil, which brings in over 90% of the country's income. Exiled Nigerian politicians in London say only such tough action will have any real impact. There must be an embargo on the sale of Nigerian oil. We believe that there must be a freezing of the private assets, the personal assets of members of this regime. On the other side of the continent, thousands of Zimbabweans have rioted in protest at police killings. They clashed with police in the centre of the capital, sending commuters and workers fleeing in panic. When the protesters began overturning government vehicles and setting them on fire, riot police were sent in with tear gas. The protests were sparked by the deaths of two civilians, accidentally shot by police last week while chasing suspected car thieves. Victorian police are defending their training policies following another fatal shooting. A 27-year-old Wodonga woman was shot three times when she allegedly lunged at police after refusing to put down two knives. Senior officers say the death was inevitable. Police were called to the dispute in Wodonga on the New South Wales-Victorian border at three this morning. Two officers, a male and a female, were confronted by a 27-year-old woman brandishing two knives. The officers say they retreated and called for the woman to do the same. She continued to uh, approach the police quickly, continuing to lunge and thrust, and uh, got to within uh, two feet of the policewoman. 
The woman, a native of Papua New Guinea, was shot three times. She died at the scene. In police work, there will always be circumstances where someone being killed at the hands of the police uh, by a gun is inevitable. It's not a matter of making excuses for police shootings occurring, it's just stating a fact of life. The person who has the weapon who's attacking the member of the police force really is the person who dictates the outcome. But community groups say continual police shootings are unacceptable. They're demanding extra family and psychiatric services to support police. If we leave it just in the hands of the police, sadly, although it's not good enough, it is inevitable that people will get killed. It's the second fatal police shooting in Victoria this year, the 10th in two years. Tim Mitchell, 10 News. Still ahead in the late night news, Americans counting the final hours to the shutdown of their government. And an eerie race is on across the frozen wastes of Antarctica.